Welcome to the first episode of BunkerShot.com TV. As inspired by Andy Brown of the UK in his video on the oldest nine-hole golf course in the world, today we visited the Dutcher Golf Course in Pauling, New York, the oldest nine-hole public course in the United States. We speak with Drew Nicholson, the village historian, who tells us more about the history of the Dutcher Golf Course and how its roots go back to the days of Tom Morris Jr. Good morning, I'm Drew Nicholson, the Village of Pauling historian, and we stand here on the Dutcher Golf Course. In my hand is a club which is dated to approximately 1900 and is thought to have been used in play on this golf course around that period of time. It's an artifact that was lent to me today by the uh, Historical Society of Quaker Hill in Pauling. This golf course is, uh, was established in 1890 as a nine-hole golf course and is uh, supposed to be uh, the oldest uh, nine-hole uh, municipal uh, public golf course in the United States. Actually, the golf course goes back five years before that. It is the child of John Bowdish Dutcher, who was a very wealthy gentleman who lived in this area who went in 1872 on a two-year uh, journey around Europe, something which was very common back in the days when um, wealthy people took their sojourns in Europe for several years. During that period of time, he went to uh, St. Andrew's Golf Course and became friends with uh, Tom Morris, uh, the younger, and became really enthralled by the game of golf. And as a result, when he returned to the United States and in 1884 built a local hotel called the Dutcher House, approximately a half a mile behind me, uphill, so to speak, towards the village, um, he determined that he was going to include a golf course for his friends in New York City and for the people who um, were the guests at the hotel. Uh, it was actually a three-hole golf course, and it was built by him and designed by him on the pasture land on which we stand today. If you look around, one of the things you'll see behind me is a stone wall, a farm wall. Uh, to my left, your right, is a, another wall. Um, the walls surround this place. These walls have existed since probably the late 1700s, early 1800s, and made a, a line around this golf course, which is about 42 acres in size. So in 1885, he opened this golf course for the guests at the hotel and for his friends. A year later, he upped the ante, so to speak. Uh, in that direction is a road which we call South Street today. Originally, it was the farm road that ran directly to his mansion. And at the foot of that farm road, it crosses the railroad tracks of the Harlem Division today, and it was the New York and Harlem Railroad back in 1886. And at that point, he put a wooden platform. And, at that, and the purpose of that platform was for his friends coming from New York City to disembark from the train and be brought up here by wagon so that they could play on the three-hole golf course. The next step here was uh, to open the golf course to the local people in Pauling, which is what he did in 1890, which is why this golf course is, has on its sign established in 1890. At that point, it was, we believe it was made into the nine-hole golf course that it is today. The arrangements of holes today are different than they were originally. When I first came to this uh, community uh, 46 years ago, Behind me, which is now the hole for the first, uh, the green for the first hole, actually was the area where the first tee was, and the first tee went in that direction, with the hole being out in that direction. Um, in 1890, uh, this became a golf course that many people say uh, was used 12 months a year. In, on January 10th, the issue of January 10th, 1892, there's a story about a gentleman in his proper toggery uh, playing on this golf course uh, in the first week of January. And one can imagine back in 1892 what this place was like in the first week in January. A lot more snow than today and probably a lot colder. 
but he was in his proper toggery and out he was playing the course. It was open 12 months a year. In 1935, uh, Lowell Thomas played on this golf course. Lowell Thomas, uh, back in the middle of the 20th century, was probably the preeminent uh, broadcaster, radio broadcaster in the United States. And after having played this course and having enjoyed it so much, since he was a resident of Quaker Hill, which is in that direction, uh, he got his friends on Quaker Hill, including Thomas E. Dewey, who ran for president of the United States and was governor of New York at one time, uh, to come together and create a golf course of their own uh, up on top of Quaker Hill, which exists today as well. But getting back to this golf course, um, an interesting part of this is that during World War II in the 1942-43-44 period, um, this area had a convalescent, convalescent uh, place for Air Force flyers who had had some physical and mental problems. And today it's part of our Lakeside Park. Back then it was called Green Mountain Farms. And at Green Mountain Farms, they would get a bus and they would load these uh, uh, Air Force uh, personnel, these injured Air Force personnel on the bus and bring them down here to play golf. Local law has it that uh, they were, had very short tempers. And if something didn't go quite well on the golf course, they were known to have thrown a, a club down and walked away. But they still had a very good time. In 1950, uh, Helen Willits Dutcher, uh, the daughter-in-law of John B. Dutcher, uh, granted this 42-acre site to the town of Pauling um, as a golf course. She put one stipulation on it, and the stipulation was that this golf course, this was to, land was to be used as a golf course uh, in perpetuity. And therefore, I guess we're going to have a golf course in Pauling, and as long as Pauling lasts. Next, we speak with Tom DeTavio, the director of golf here at the Desert Golf Course, and he shows us his favorite holes on the golf course, also known as Pauling's own Amen Corner. Hi, everyone. My name is Tom DeTavio. I'm the new director of golf of Dutcher Golf Course here in Pauling, New York. And we're here at the, uh, the sixth hole where we uh, have grown to know our sixth and seventh and eighth hole as Amen point. Such a um, a keen hole because you really uh, the, the green sets in down underneath there over the hump and you really can't see it much here but. It almost reminds us of uh, one of the par three in Amen Corner where it kind of turns around and it's kind of a neat hole. The golf course has really been uh, helped this year by uh, the amount of rain that we've had. It's kept it green, you know, and the superintendent, Fred Luttrell, and his assistant, Jason Watson, have been tirelessly working here, you know. It's a seven day a week operation. We've got a lot of play and uh, we're just trying to make it a better place and revenue avenue for people to come play golf. And being that, you know, we really don't have an irrigation system that supports uh, our fairways and, and, and roughs, it's, it's, it's tirelessly and impossible to keep the golf course in, in immaculate condition because of that. Um, and they do, they do a terrific job, both Fred and Jason. Lastly, Tom tells us about why being the director of golf of the Dutcher Golf Course is special to him. Yeah, here we are again, uh, talking a little bit about the Dutcher Golf Course and uh, the kind of facility that we do have here. And it's, it's just to me brings back so many memories. That the kind of golf course that I was I grew up on. This is where my dad, who was my only teacher, taught me how to play golf on a par three golf course used to be called Green Valley in Purchase, and it had lights, and I waited for him to come home at night to take me on the golf course to play. And now here I am being the director of Dutcher, and at the same type of facility, which I think is, 
is a great spot, not only for kids and grown-ups, to learn how to play golf. It's not a very long golf course. It's in good condition. and allows you to be comfortable and relaxed without distance factors. And that's one of the reasons why I like it very much. And I hope that we can keep doing what we're doing here, bringing a nice atmosphere and a pleasant atmosphere to the, to the club, enjoying its members, and having great golfing seasons. Thank you. Well, I hope you enjoyed our step back into time in the history of golf in the United States. Since the Dutcher Golf Course is in my hometown of Pauline, New York, I hope to see you sometime as I tee it up on Sunday mornings. Until then, this has been Rob Walters for BunkerShot.com TV.